it takes a lot of practice, takes a lot of um, um, effort. Um, like they say, uh, songwriting is 10% uh, inspiration, but 90% perspiration. So it takes a lot of effort and work to get it right. Even for myself, the more I've been working with my students, the better a songwriter I became. Most people have, to some degree, a creative bone within them. Um, and yeah, that varies between person to person, but that's where the raw ideas might come from. But the craft is actually putting those cool ideas into, into a form that's actually going to connect with people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where the learning curve is. Some have that natural ability to start with. You get, you know, I, I think even, um, even Lennon and McCartney would probably probably both agreed on that, that, you know, they just had this little gift. Uh, and there's a heap of other writers we could use for that example as well, but they're one example. And they, you know, they just had a leaning to create and they just had this feel to be able to put stuff together, even though they weren't taught as songwriters, yeah. but they just had this thing. So we're not all that gifted, but I don't, uh, as gifted as they are, but uh, there's, there's no reason you can't teach people the craft and uh, help them develop their ideas and, you know, take them that one step further. So. Yeah. Hello, my name is Melissa Jennison and welcome to Discussions in Songwriting Creation. Building a successful career in songwriting requires talent, technique and sustained creativity. Talent is something we are born with. We all possess enormous creative potential and technique can be learnt and nurtured. But creativity is the catalyst for using our talents and discovered techniques to produce an artistic outcome. By speaking with songwriting teachers and their students, the aim of these discussions is to inspire and inform amateur and newcoming songwriting artists about the art of songwriting. In my opinion, John Farnham is the only one who could do You're the Voice justice, just like Elvis did with Teddy Bear. So what do you think is more important, the great performer or a great song? I'll still definitely say the song is more important, but I really do appreciate there is magic in, in um, certain performers. Elvis was irreplaceable he was Elvis and you know he just had these simple songs that most for the most part he didn't actually write mm. but yeah he was a brilliant performer um, I appreciate that you know I think it's fantastic had those songs not been there it probably wouldn't have worked he may not have seen the light of day mm. so it'll always I believe anyway it'll always come back to that yes we want brilliant performers but it'll always come back to the song in my opinion um, but yeah you know whether it's Elvis or you know um, the late Whitney, uh, she put her own brand on that song and uh, it was still a good song 20 years prior to her doing it when Dolly wrote it and performed it on her own album. But Whitney just put something on it. Um, I love Hallelujah as a song. It's in one of my all time top 10, I suppose, favorites, but pretty much Jeff Buckley's version is the one that does it for me. Mm. There's something about him resonating with that song and just that unspeakable something that was in that recording. It was just brilliant. It, that's going to be hard to top by any any other artist, you know. 
doesn't detract from the song. Many have done the song because they love the song and yeah. they've probably done pretty good versions. Uh, I've heard Leonard Cohen's version, the writer. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, really like Jeff Buckley's probably for the same reason that most other people did as well. Mm. So while there's something great in a, perf a good performance and we'll all appreciate that, I always think it's going to come back to the song. So. Yeah. I would probably say that you can... A good song is a good song, you know. And it kind of, I mean, if it is is as, as good as, as it is, it should kind of be successful regardless, I think, of who um, does it. Uh, you know, and there's many songs that have been done by, you know, hundreds of different artists, like, um, I can't really think of one actually that comes to mind. I don't know, maybe Hallelujah. Um, that's been millions of renditions and it's always... Um, a great song so I think I'll probably say that the song is more important than the talent but it takes a good talent I mean there are many good talents out there who are unforgettable so it's, it's a tough one but yeah pro probably the song okay great I think it depends what you're singing if you're singing pop music I think the song and what sells more is more important but at the same time you, like you said before earlier I think that you definitely want someone with a good voice singing, but it's sort of it's sort of even because if it's if it's mainstream sort of stuff, I think the song's more important. But if it's not, then the voice is definitely important. You mm. can't have someone with a bad voice singing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you can have one without the other. Um, like Taylor Swift was really young. I know a lot of people perhaps don't seeing her what i see in her but her songwriting ability is fantastic and 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 what she the stories that she has if you gave that to george michael to sing it would sound ridiculous mm. so the, the, the two go hand in hand you, you need the personality and you need the artist and you need the the song list to support the artist yeah so, yeah do you prefer to collaborate or to write in a solo capacity i'm pretty new at collaboration and it's not easy. I, maybe some people find it really easy. It's not as easy as it sounds. So um, do I prefer it? I prefer it because it's pushing me out of my comfort zone and I, I like to always push out of the comfort zone. So in that regards, I wouldn't say I'm loving it, <laughs> but I'm learning to understand what benefits it can bring. Um, I have primarily written by myself otherwise. Yeah. I've had students who's told me, um, no, this is my song. I want it to be mine alone. Mine only. Yes, you can do that, but uh, um, there are things that I can't do. That. There are things that I can't think of. By collaborating, it allows me to be able to 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 get more out of the song. Because at the end of the day, it's not about me. It's about the song. Mm. Because one day I'll die. I want the song to continue. Mm. You know, I have, and um, and my catalog of songs maybe might have a song that's been recorded here and there, another one here. Or, or none, but you, um, you, you got to realize that someone like Chris Christopherson didn't have success early, uh, too early in his, in his life. He worked with a publisher, he's been writing songs that's been published, but never getting anywhere. And he even quit songwriting and started to work um, as an helico helicopter pilot. Mm, that's right. You know, for an oil rig in, uh, in America, and to hear suddenly that his song's been on the radio. Okay, uh, I can't remember which song it was, For the Good Times, I think, or something like that, was uh, helped me make it through the night. But got the songs, a song coming out there and suddenly hitting the radio. But what that has done is suddenly all the songs that he has written in the past gets, to, gets known. So, even your song is not known today, keep writing. Get better at it, because someday, once you break through with one song, then you will find that the... Rest uh, will come. Yep, <laughs> the, the rest follows. What are your thoughts on how important music theory is in songwriting? Interesting. Um, I, I think it's an asset, but it's not fundamental to songwriting. Um, it's it, it it's effectively gives you more tools, but you know a lot of the biggest songs in the world have got 
they've got two chords in them. You don't need a lot of <laughs> tools for that. Um, they're just simple, clever ideas put together well. You know, you don't need to be Mozart to perform or to put those songs together effectively. But at the same time, you know, writers who do have that knowledge, they probably have more complexities going on in their song and are totally capable of writing equally good songs. It's just, you know, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. But, um, but it's not mandatory. There's, there's, there's a lot of hit songwriters who can't read a note of music, can't even play an instrument, but they can still write hit songs, you know. I hope you are enjoying discussions in songwriting creation. We'll be back after this short break. Do you prefer to collaborate or to write in a solo capacity? I mean, statistically, the greatest number of hit songs in the last 50 to 60 years are collaborations. Uh, one trend we have seen, particularly of late, um, are the numbers of songwriter credits underneath a song title in the Billboard charts, or any chart for that matter. Uh, you, you often find a song um, has five or six or seven writers these days. Uh, particularly in America, that's a, a, good, a trend. Uh, and what they're doing is they'll have a specialist in certain parts of the songs and they'll hook each other and, up and, and work as a team. And, and basically you're getting ab just absolute specialists working in, on, on this one song. And I think for the better, really, you're getting there's some great songs coming out at the moment. So, um, but yeah, you know, occasionally uh, th there's one by a solo writer that's hit the charts, nothing wrong with that. Um, some are, so, some are uh, dedicated enough and put in the work and can do that on their own, they're driven enough. Others, I think, fall by the wayside, you know, and again we come back to that, not finishing the ideas. Whereas when you're collaborating with someone, one or two others, um, the synergy is usually much greater anyway, so you'll come up with something much better or that you perhaps didn't think of working in a solo capacity. So a uh, much better result, that's, that's the net. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I think we're all better for it. Yeah. Um, I think there's good things out of both, working with yourself and working with others. You know, working with others, you get the whole um, uh, criticism kind of, you can work back and forth with the person. Um, to come to a right solution, whereas on your own, you probably, by the time you've gotten to the end of the song, you're like, this is awesome, oh, I'm amazing. <laughs> um, but, you know, you, you probably not. Um, so I would say probably working with others. Um, I, I would say there's very, very few songs out there and very few artists that have actually done it completely on their own and, and um, released it like that. Um, so I think it is, with anything creative, I think it's important to get feedback. Mm. Well, recently I've been working with other musicians and things okay. and um, sort of playing around with that. Most of the time I write solo, but I really enjoy like collaborating and stuff and doing things with different people. I've yeah. been doing a lot of that lately and I really like working off other people yeah. and sort of just bringing different energies and stuff like bouncing back. I think it makes a better song if you can work with other musicians and things. What makes a great song? Is it lyrics, melody, theme or the whole lot? Well, I would say yes, it's the whole lot. Yeah. But however, each individual bit needs to be assessed on its own, on its own, by, of its own merit. Okay, the lyrics. If I'd say that uh, a title should be a hit, I would say if I had written, if I was the first person to ever think of a title like Bridge Over Troubled Water or The Sound of Silence, mm -hmm. you know it's a hit. Okay, it's not like I love you very much, <laughs> you know, that nobody cares about that. So you know the titles are hit. What do you believe makes a song a classic? A song to be a classic is something that, uh, you know, in years to come, people will still love the song, other artists will still want to perform it. Um, it's immortal, something that people in, would always want to hear. Oh, classic. Um, that's a real hard one to pick. I don't. I don't know that you can write one. You can. You can write great songs and hope they're going to be one. We all hope that, especially with the check. <laughs> but <laughs> but you, I. I don't think you can write one. You can write one and you think when you're finished, wow, that's a great song. You know, I feel really good about that. Um, 
and chances are if, if enough people feel that same way about it it's going to have a big fan base that particular song or that particular artist and that's fine but I you can't pick that it's going to be a classic if some things res, end up resonating more with um, or it's you know it's kind of like I'll always love you for Whitney it, it, that was her they call it the career ballad you know uh, which a lot of artists have um, particularly artists who are, are real singers uh, and I mean you know they're and very accomplished singers and known for that, they'll usually have a, a career maker and it'll be their song, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just, even if it was written by someone else mm -hmm. or another artist did it earlier. And you can't really make that happen. You can't pick it. It just happens, you know, if everything lines up. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna be a great song to start with, but, you know, I think you put it out there and the fans will, they'll kind of decide if it's gonna be a classic or not, so. You do the best you do, but you, you can't actually, you can't design that from the ground up. What advice or tips would you offer aspiring songwriters? Um, well, um, have a work ethic. Some do, obviously. Some are, some are very good and regimented. Uh, others, uh, they, could, they could certainly better themselves by, A, understanding all the tools. They may or may not have to do a course to do that. I don't know. Uh, but um, a lot of them... Some are a little lazier than others, I've found, and um, when, uh, if you quiz them about it, um, it's kind of like, yeah, they'd rather go for a drink down the pub. <laughs> uh, they still want to be a famous songwriter, and I say, well, you've actually got to work at it. Um, you've got to understand the tools, wonderful tools available to you, but you've got to uh, instigate a bit of a regime and work at it. Uh, and the proof's in the pudding. There's, there's, if you spoke to any of the hit songwriters around, I've, I've met numbers of them over the years, they've all work, had to work at it. None of them said it came easy. Um, and it's all, you know, we're talking maybe 10, 12 years before any of them had s some decent success that they might put it in, in their words. Uh, but they had to work at it. And, uh, you know, no one's going to give it to you, but it's there for anyone who wants it, you know. I would say that they should uh, never stop writing and um, that they should uh, improve themselves and uh, not to be discouraged if the song doesn't get in the way today. It will someday, but uh, if you put on the hard work and it will happen. Uh, so uh, everything is learned. So there's, like I said, there's 90% uh, perspiration in songwriting. So you got to put on the hard work. So a songwriter who doesn't work hard will never get anywhere. Mm. The one who does will get somewhere one day. You just have to hope and wait. And persistence. Yeah, persistence. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you for this. But persistence is probably the the tick at the top. Yeah. You know, it's, um, because it's that. Uh, if you don't persist, you can have all the great ideas, you can know everything about songwriting, you can be good at business, etc., but you don't, you're lazy, you don't do it, you know, it's not, you're not going to persist, you're not going to develop your, your, your skill. Um, age is no barrier, it doesn't matter how old you are, start writing, music, music is my meditation. You know, I pick my guitar up and everything else melts away. It's just me, my guitar and the music. And I don't think it matters how old you are, whether you're 5 or 50 or 95, get in there, give it a go, write a song, do it for your grandkids, do it for the world, do it for whoever, just do it. Yeah. Mm. But I have to say that since uh, I've, um, probably since the song uh, Where Is The Love from uh, Black Eyed Peas, mm -hmm. I love rap. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so yeah, but it depends how it's presented. You know, it's, I, I call this melody crap. Mm. Okay, so it's got a melody behind, and uh, you can follow a melody. And I'm starting to get involved with other people who write rap now, and mm. to do that kind of thing. You know, so because music evolves, music yeah. progress. So there's no, um, there's no such thing as okay, this is how songwriting should be, and this is and stops there, mm. and that's it. You know, I. Mean, I did um, the Major Songs School songwriting course. When I first started the course, I understood, obviously I listened to a lot of music all my life like most people, and I understood what a song was, but did not have by any means the understanding of the depth of um, technique required and skills required to actually write a song um, that may or may not get noticed in, in the publishing arena. And as I've progressed as a songwriter, 
I've become more serious about the tools I use. So the songwriter I am today as versus say five, six years ago, I do believe I'm understanding better and better tools. Um, you like examples, there are a few particular tools I find really, really helpful. One is what they call a word palette. And I used to just write stuff off the top of my head and that was okay to a point, but a word palette gives you it hones in on, on, on the song's title and what you're actually writing about. So the last song I've just written in the last month or so, I've had a huge word palette and it was so much easier to write the song and be really specific um, about what the message in the song was. I guess the other thing, is, there's a few things I've learnt from the course. The other one was waking up with the songwriter. So when you actually wake up in the morning, you're thinking and looking around you at what could be a song and that just opens up a whole other avenue of um, internal dialogue, I suppose, of what you could actually turn into words for a song. Yeah. And metaphors, had to work a lot to learn about metaphors, and they're really helpful in songwriting. And um, yeah, writing to a title. I've made a few errors where I have not written to a title, and I've ended up in a big mess halfway through a song when I realised that it doesn't make sense anymore, and <laughs> had to scrap it and start again. Oh, yeah. Discussions in songwriting creation will return after these messages. Please stay tuned. Why teach songwriting? Again, probably like a lot of other people within the industry, we like pass, passing it forward, as you, you know, as they say, uh, or paying it forward. I think that's the phrase. Um, just just sharing what we know with with, with others, with the younger. Uh, kids coming up today, pr primarily, um, there was none of that around when when I started, uh, which is a while ago now. <laughs> um, uh, you know, there weren't schools to teach you how to write songs. There weren't schools to teach you how to um, engineer on records. There weren't none of that was around. So. Pretty much everything we had to do, I mean, you could get singing lessons or perhaps guitar lessons, but that was about the size of it. Uh, these days you've got media schools and songwriting schools, obviously, uh, production, all, all myriad of things, which I think are a great help to young, uh, young artists coming up. And uh, it, it just helps them, you know, achieve a lot more a lot earlier, I think. Tony's definitely made a massive impact on my music already, I think. I mean... I've already finished a lot more songs, sort of the half-written songs I had, yeah. because I'm a musician and like I write music all the time, but sometimes you kind of are unsure of where to go, like with your music and the sort of things you're unsure about and he sort of fills in the gaps for you a little bit and helps you out a little bit and lets you know about the industry and stuff and it's like really moved me forward with my music more. Excellent. Definitely have more of an understanding now. Yep. I'm incredibly impatient, so I'm the kind of person that will just run into a thing like, let's do this and this and this. But um, Song School and Tony particularly taught me to um, the quality of just kind of like sitting back, collating, taking a moment um, and piecing it together more, more structurally. Um, and like I said, when I was younger, I was just babbling on improvised whatever. And then when I got older, I started thinking about it more seriously. But it wasn't until I did song school that I, I learnt more, you know, how the industry kind of works, how proper songwriters are writing. They do, they really set out like verse, chorus. It, it's a big influence on how the structure of the song is and how it builds and things like that. Whereas before I was more just impulsive in how I wanted to sound. But Tony kind of taught me that there's a there's a way to do it and it can still be as expressive as you like but not um, completely, you know, train wreck running off the tracks. Um, not that I was like that but yeah, so that really influenced me. The actual approach of songwriting, um, there is a technique to it and it really works if you work at it. This is the trick. Um, if songwriters can understand that, then they will understand um, if they want to get somewhere with their music, with their songwriting, they need proper training. They need to, to they need to get books. Even at least get some books and read. And learn. You will not find a book that says, um, "Just write like you want." Mm. It should be good enough. <laughs> There's no such book. <laughs> There's no good way of writing and bad way of writing. But in every situation, you got to make sure that you get you 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 do the best that you can to make sure that you communicate that song. It's a communication that you're communicating uh, the message through your song to your audience. If it works, you're okay.
Thanks for watching Discussions in Songwriting Creation. We hope that if you are considering a career in songwriting or just enjoying writing songs as a hobby, that these discussions inspire you to learn more about the art and perhaps seek out credible schools and teachers who will impart the knowledge and requirements for pursuing a professional career in songwriting. Basically, what you want to write about is something that you can sell. Mm. Okay, and then again, you have different type of songwriters. You have a songwriter who, who is happy to write what he or she writes and uh, satisfied with what he or she writes and there's, there's, no, uh, there's no wrong or right for that. To, you, you can write what you want, mm. okay? But can you sell the song? Are, are, are you a professional songwriter? Do you consider yourself a professional songwriter? It's a learned thing, like everything else in life. It's a learned thing.